Hi, everyone. And um, this is <laughs> your conclusion rocks. Kicking your boring conclusion to the curb. So I want you to watch, if you haven't already, um, please watch the first two videos about doing an argument or a persuasive essay. The first is about a claim and reasons, and the second is about evidence and explanation. And um, I went through all the parts there, the introduction and then the body paragraphs, but I didn't really talk too much about having a conclusion. So that's what we're going to be doing now. Types of conclusions. Um, the rocks thing is, it seems really corny, but it's just something to help you remember. Rebuttal, overview, circle back, kick the reader into action, and answer the so what question. So these are all the types of conclusions, and we're going to be going through one at a time. Basic rules of having a conclusion. Do... Keep your conclusion energetic and inspiring. A lot of times people wait until the last minute to write a paper. Um, and then what happens is they kind of peter out and they go, OK, so in conclusion, everything I just said. And you really, especially in persuasive writing, you have to. Oh, dear. You have to keep everything inspiring because you are trying to persuade people to do, think, or believe something. You want to inspire them. You have to leave an interesting thing in their mind. This is the last thing they're going to read. And especially, not just for this class, but for other classes too, um, you have to leave something good in your instructor's mind. If you end on a bad note, they're going to give you a bad grade. Don't write your conclusion when you're tired. Do use new language. Don't copy and paste from the introduction. We talked about this before. New language, not new ideas. So review the main point. Don't introduce new ideas. You don't want something popping up in the conclusion, like a major reason or a second part of your claim or something completely unconnected to your thesis. And finally, this is also uh, something I'd like you to note. These conclusions, the rocks conclusions, rebuttal, overview, circle back, kick the reader into action, and uh, answering the so what question. You don't have to use just one at a time. My iTunes is popping up there. You don't have to use just one at a time. You can do them in combination. Don't just restate your thesis. I think, again, a lot of times in high school, this is what people are told to do, and I really don't want you to do that. I don't want you to just restate your thesis. If you do an overview or you have a summary conclusion, there's a little bit more to it than just paraphrasing your thesis statement. So the first type is a rebuttal. This is my favorite cartoon here. Jimmy says you're a poopy head. Do you have a rebuttal? Little kids having a more sophisticated argument. A rebuttal is when you argue against um, someone else. So if you have a persuasive essay where you have a rebuttal, you can conclude with a rebuttal as well. Remind your readers of your argument's main points. Um, use this when you are making an argument in your essay. Why isn't it effective? It helps your reader see why your points are strong or effective and why the other side's points are weak and ineffective. So when you're making an argument in your essay or you have a persuasive essay that is specifically against, I'll say, um, point B. So you take point A, there's another thing that takes point B. You want to recap your argument's main points and then show again why point B or why the other side is not correct. So the types of essay these are found in. Um, if you have what's called a reader response essay, sometimes you might have this for one of your other classes. That's where you read an argument and you respond to it. So you agree with it or you disagree with it. If you have a persuasive or argumentative essay, or sometimes if you have a problem solution essay where someone else has presented a solution to a problem and you don't agree with it. Don't resort to name calling here. Keep a reasonable tone. Remember that this should still be academic and professional. 
it's not the kind of rebuttal that you're going to get in like the comments on a YouTube video. So here's a rebuttal example. The author's claim was, even though it will cost taxpayers money, we must change the state's high schools into single sex schools. So they wanted all boys schools and all girls schools. Ideas for a rebuttal against, oh, this was not the student's claim, but somebody that they um, were arguing against. So in their conclusion, they summarized the benefits of blended schools, that is schools that have both male and female students. They revisited the author's faulty reasoning, facts, and statistics, and they recapped the idea of having a more cost-efficient solution, which was um, an idea that they had in their paper where there could be magnet schools or charter schools that were just for boys or just for girls that parents could choose to put their kids in if they wanted. So the next one is overview. So give you an overview of the offices, says the cartoon. What to include? Overview the argument and the thesis and summarize your main points. This is basically the type of conclusion that you did before. You had a summary conclusion where you overviewed all of your main points. Um, it's a little bit different in a persuasive essay than it was in your informative essay because you're overviewing the argument in order to persuade people. So I usually recommend that in an persuasive essay, if you do an overview, you combine it with one of the other types of conclusions. So you either have a rebuttal where there was somebody that you were arguing against specifically, um, or you combine it with one of the ones that's coming up. Use it when you agree with an author. Um, if you're agreeing with a specific point, when you have an argument made using many different sources to back your thesis. You have a couple sources this time. When you do your research paper, you're gonna be using, I think, seven or eight sources. So having part of your conclusion be an overview is a great way to go. Why it's effective. It helps your reader to see your argument all at once. That's why it's called an overview. So we get a recap of all of those points. And then the types of essays you use this in, obviously not just for this class. If you have a process essay, meaning if you're describing how to do something, recapping how to do it at the end is a great way to help your reader understand that process. The persuasive essay that we're doing here, if you're showing causes and effects or if you're comparing or contrasting things, an overview can be very helpful. Say you're doing comparison and contrast essay for like maybe, I don't know, a psychology class. If you're comparing like maybe two mental illnesses, you can show all the points of comparison and then you can show all the ways that something is different. So when you have an overview in that um, situation, same thing for cause and effect. You show all the causes and then you show all the effects. Having it summarized is important, especially if you're trying to teach someone something, which is also why I had you do it in your informative essay as well. Um, if you're teaching something, summarizing it for your listener or for your reader can be helpful to help them learn. Don't merely restate your thesis or copy and paste your introductory notes. Overview example. The thesis here for this paper, in addition to steroids and other performance enhancing drugs, some nutritional supplements should be banned from professional sports. That was the person's thesis. Um, so ideas for an overview. They could have reviewed the type of supplements that should be banned summarize the disadvantages of those nutritional supplements, and restate ideas on how to ban those supplements. So it really would kind of depend on, um, for, this, for this person's um, essay, that's, those were basically their three reasons, the three things that they focused on. All of the types of supplements that should be banned, what the disadvantages are, why they should be banned, and then how the ban would actually work. Lance Armstrong up there. Circle back is our next one in our rocks. Circle back. I forgot I did that. Um, circle back. What to include? 
If you have a really strong hook in your introduction, you can come full circle and refer back to the hook in your conclusion. This is a great way to reinforce your thesis. Sometimes what people also do here is they'll have an anecdote. An anecdote is another word for a short story. A very short story. It's a story usually told in maybe a paragraph. So what you can do is have um, part of your anecdote in the introduction and the end of your anecdote in the conclusion. One of the ways that this works is that um, if you have a strong example or a quote or an anecdote like that, um, it gives your reader a final image to better remember what you're talking about and it gives a sense of completion to your essay. The other thing that this is useful for is that um, it keeps people reading. You hook them in with a really good story. They want to know the end of it, right? So if you can kind of learn how to do that with a little bit of finesse, it can be quite effective. Types of essays this works well with. If you have a personal narrative, um, which I know for some of your classes you do, you can start a personal story in the introduction and then kind of do a flashback, work your way through it, um, and then finish it in the conclusion. Another thing that you can do is if you have pieces of a paper that are personal narrative, like let's say you're writing a paper about addiction and that's something you struggled with. You could start with um, you know, the first time I took a drink, I was nine years old. And then at the end of your essay, you can say, I never realized that taking a drink at nine um, would really lead me to such a horrible addiction by the time I was in my 30s, right? That's just one example. A descriptive essay or a definition essay is something that you might have in some of your other classes. It's where you're describing an event or you're defining something, Um cause and effect essays and compare and contrast, which we talked about before, but really even in, an, even in a persuasive essay, this could be used. Anywhere where you have a very strong hook in the beginning. The only thing I would not recommend this for is when you get further into your academic career, if you're writing papers that are like say 20 pages long or 30 pages long, having a circle back is not going to be effective because really by the time your reader gets to the end, they might not remember what you talked about in the beginning. Don't merely restate the fact or quotation. You really want to maybe refer back to it and, um, and talk about it in a little more depth or bring it up again, but you don't want to copy and paste your sentence. So here is our example for circling back. Um, the introductory hook and thesis that the person had, this was from a paper that someone did about social media. Nearly 50% of Facebook users check their Facebook page 20 times a day, and those active on Twitter post up to 50 times daily. These facts help to demonstrate a growing dependence on social media that interferes with work and family life. Now, in their conclusion... They referred back to the facts, explained how they demonstrated and related to the argument, and then referred, uh, oh, and they also related them to some personal experience to kind of illustrate the thesis. So again, bringing a little personal experience into the conclusion isn't that bad, as long as you keep an academic tone. And kick the reader into action. <laughs> it's dangerous, um, is our next one. What to include. You explain what your reader needs to know about the problem and specifically how he or she can help resolve the issue. So for example, um, you're persuading your reader to do something specific. If you're writing about how cigarettes should be illegal in your conclusion, you can kick the reader into action. Either say, here's where you go to make cigarettes illegal or here's why you need to stop smoking. Um, Direct persuasion, helping inspire your reader to act. Really, um, if you have a persuasive essay, sometimes a process, if you're describing a process that you want your reader to do. Um, if you have a problem solution essay um, where there's a problem, there's a couple ways to solve it, and you want your reader to do one of those things to solve the problem, don't be afraid to use second person here, you can talk directly to your reader. So you can say like you can or you should or you need to. Usually we don't use you in our writing, but you can in that type of conclusion. Here's our example. 
The problem of global warming can be solved by further regulations on industry and reducing carbon emissions. That's the person's claim. Ideas for kicking the reader into action. Demonstrating that, up, that the reader can personally reduce carbon emissions. Explaining how people can influence government regulations on industry. And explain what the author had done to reduce pollution in the home. I will say that um, these examples were from a conclusion where that is what the person did in their argument. They talked about all of those three things. So they did a little bit of an overview. And then in the conclusion, they kicked people into action um, after reviewing those points. So people can reduce your carbon, their carbon emissions. You can do this today, that kind of thing. So what? This is my favorite type of conclusion. Um, so what? Who cares? Why me? Um, why is this my favorite type of conclusion? Because I think that it really helps your reader to be persuaded the most. They, a so what conclusion answers the question, so what? Why should I care? You use it when you want to show your readers how the topic fits into the big picture. So if you're talking about something like whether people should homeschool, why is that important? Why should they care about that topic? Let's say you're talking about um, New York just passed a law where kids of 16 and 17 can no longer be tried as adults. Why is that important? How will that change people's lives? Why it's effective. It connects your topic directly to your audience and their daily lives. Newspaper articles try to do this a lot where they will, um, they're giving a story. A lot of times they'll give like the local side of the story because it directly relates to people a little bit more. Um, sometimes if they say like, you know, there was an earthquake in Australia, maybe not a lot of people will care about that. But if they say, 10 people from Albany were killed in an earthquake in Australia. Now it directly relates to you and your community. You might want to read the story. Types of essays this works well with. Persuasive essay, personal narrative especially, I think, because you're taking something that's personal to you and then showing why other people should, um, should care about it or should... Um, yeah, it answers the so what question. What does your personal experience have to do with the person reading? Cause and effect and compare and contrast. Um, so what? Who cares why the things, uh, why one thing's causing another? So what? Who cares how one thing is compared to another? That's what the conclusion is for. You need to tell them. Keep your perspective small. Don't keep your perspective small, rather. Uh, don't try to say, you know, this is how it affects me. Rather, this is how it affects our, our nation or our world. So here's our example. Outside my parents, my fourth grade teacher was the most inspiring person in my life. This is true. My parents told me some things about her recently that made me very sad. <laughs> so if I was writing about this, um, what would I put in my conclusion? I could show the importance of education. Um, the significance of childhood memories on later growth and development, um, show what it takes to be a hero or inspiration to someone. My fourth grade teacher really encouraged me um, in my writing, and I don't know that I would, I became an author and an English professor, and I don't know that that would have happened had it not been for her. People like that um, as teachers can have a huge impact on people as adults. And when you have a teacher who cares, they can shape your life um, in positive ways. When you have a teacher who doesn't care, they can really be detrimental and make you not like learning and set you off course. So it's those kind of things that I would probably say in my conclusion. So in conclusion, let me overview what we've talked about. Pre-writing. Before writing your conclusion, look over your introduction. What's the best way to reinforce your thesis? What type of conclusion should you have? You can choose one conclusion you think fits your paper, or you can, buy, can combine the types. Make sure you use transitions. Sometimes in conclusion or in summary is fine, but if you have a transitional sentence, it might work a little bit better. Also, there's a list of transitions from like week one or week two that you can take a look at to help you out with this. Use new language, but not new concepts. And then your conclusion will rock. And that is it. Keep it energetic. Um, I hope that uh, I 
will enjoy reading the conclusions. And again, always, if you have any questions, come to my office hours or email me. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.